Let us pray. In our singing, our praying, our being together, in the words that we share, may you speak to each heart the word it longs to hear this day, in Jesus' name. Amen. Part of the movement towards retirement for people in my line of work is dealing with a great accumulation of books. And my conversations with other retiring colleagues inevitably turn to books and what to do with them. A friend recently retired, set the ambitious goal of reducing his library to 300 books, and I'm not sure that he made it. And I don't have a specific numeric goal for library downsizing, but I've been working on it for a while. A few years ago, the region's licensed lay worship leaders were meeting in our church, and we were asked by Georgina, who was leading it, if uh, Elizabeth and I were asked if we had any books we would like to donate. And uh, our eyes lit up, and we contributed several brimming boxes of books to that gathering. We have also placed a good number of books on the counter in the upper hallway, offering them to anyone who might want them, still available today. In Elizabeth's now empty office, we also have a book, a box set aside for the next licensed lay worship leaders gathering, so the downsizing continues. Some books simply don't hold their value. Could I interest you in a study of church demographics for the year 1995? When I was a student, I would scrimp and save to buy biblical commentaries, which is what you work through to do the exegetical work so you can write sermons. Now, the best material is online and it's free. So biblical commentaries gather dust, not sure what to do with them. Some books have a particular value to the one who owns them. Some books, some authors have a particular impact. And so this summer, through the summer Sundays between now and Labor Day, I'm going to share with you each week a book or an author who had a great influence on me and whom I think has something to say that still resonates for us now. And the first... Sunday, it's uh, Henri Nouwen. Henri Nouwen was a prolific writer. He wrote 39 books on psychology, pastoral ministry, spirituality, social justice. I was surprised when I was working through my books to find that I actually own 13 titles of his, a proof of the fact I must like what he has to say. Nouwen is a Dutch Roman Catholic priest. He moved to North America, spent 10 years teaching at Yale Divinity School, and moved to Harvard to teach there. His final years were spent in the Daybreak community, the L'Arche community in Toronto. I had breakfast with Henri Nouwen once, sort of. I was on a retreat at the Sisters of St. John the Divine Convent in Toronto, and so was he. So I looked up from my oatmeal and saw him taking the chair across from me, but it was a silent retreat, so I really didn't, couldn't say much to him other than hi. Nowen's most famous books include The Return of the Prodigal Son, which is named as one of the 100 greatest Christian books of all time. It's a reflection on Rembrandt's painting of the parable and of the story that Jesus told. And here is one nugget of wisdom I would share from Nowen's writing that I am grateful for. A few years ago, I went to a seminar on time management, and one of the things that was emphasized was, was the need to work free from, from interruptions. Interruptions, we were told, Reduce productivity, interruptions, great concentration, disrupt energy flow, derail creativity. And the course recommended finding ways to eliminate interruptions because interruptions will take away from your work. 
On the other hand, Henri Nouwen, in one of his books on ministry called Reaching Out, suggests that interruptions are the most important part of the day. In ministry, or in any walk of life, whatever we are doing, we have our agenda, our to-do lists, our scheduled calendars, things that really need our attention. But then the phone rings, or someone comes to the door, or you get a ping from a text message, an interruption, the needs of someone, a crisis in someone's life intrudes on your day, and you can just throw that planned agenda away. You have to attend to the interruption. Interruptions, now and says, are not to be avoided. They may be a blessing, a means of grace. They may be the in, most important part of your day. So now and tells us to welcome interruption. Perhaps Nowen's most influential book is The Wounded Healer, in which he proposed a new model of offering care in church communities. We were not offering care from above, but come alongside. He proposed that it's not expertise that is most wanted when people come to us, but compassion, shared humanity. He wrote that our own woundedness, our own struggle can be a gift that we offer to others in their time of need. That our shared humanity is the greatest gift that we can offer to another person. Some 30 years ago, Nawan wrote an essay in a Toronto paper called Catholic New Times, and it reflected on the theme of the wounded healer. I no longer have the article he wrote, but I remember it very well. He took today's gospel, the story of Jesus washing his disciples' feet, and he pointed to how Jesus in that story insists that his followers must kneel before him. He draws attention to Jesus' directive that his followers are not just to give care, but they have to receive it as well. Nowen suggested that when we are open to sharing our brokenness, our woundedness with one another fully in community, in a safe space, when we can be open that we too have struggles in that sharing, healing community can be found. And we see concrete examples of that. We have two AA groups meeting here at Rito Park, AA is a healing community where sharing stories of struggle is encouraged. Strength is found in sharing what might, might in other places be kept hidden. Or in the past, we have offered grief groups that can help people who have suffered loss to connect to others who really understand the experience of loss. As Leonard Cohen wrote, there is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. In the spirit of Nowen and the wounded healer model, perhaps it's helpful in this time of transition to lift up that as Rideau Park goes through a time of transition, so do its ministers, so did Elizabeth, so do I. And while I'm certain the timing of my retirement is right, it's also hard to separate from such a blessed community after 24 years of deep connection. So, if you're feeling stress or anxiety or grief around this time of tradition, me too. In a book not written by Henri Nouwen, calling Running Through the Thistles, a book about concluding a pastoral relationship, the author encourages pastors to see and to attend to their own grief as they deal with the grief of transition in their congregation. If you don't acknowledge your own grief, it will get in the way of all the good things you want to do. Retirement, for me, brings the promise of new patterns and redirected energy and new possibilities. And it's the same for you here at Middle Park. There is the grief that comes with the ending of things, but then there's the hope of new life to come. And we will move through all of this in the coming weeks together. Thanks be to God. Amen.